Hey, it's Isabella Taylor, Australia's youngest interviewer here, and welcome to the Inspired By podcast. Do you wake up excited to start your day? I've been an inspirational story chaser since I was six years old. Everyone I've interviewed loves what they do, and to them, it's not work. I'm so excited. Are you ready? In five, four, three, two, one. Let's go, people! Corinne Grant, Australian lawyer and comedian, shares her inspiring journey thus far and her very clear views that there is more than one way to find and follow your passions. Welcome to Inspired by HQ, Corinne. We feel very blessed to have such an incredible role model like you now calling Adelaide home. Thank you so much for having me. It's a joy to be here. Thank you. You grew up in a town of 1,100 people. What was it like growing up knowing everybody? I don't only, I not only knew them, I was related to half of them. So <laughs> I tell you what, you couldn't do anything naughty because everyone would find out about it. So I grew up, you know what? I grew up learning how to be sneaky. <laughs> when I first moved down to Melbourne, which is where I went to university, and I was going to lectures at university, there were more people in my lectures than had been in my whole high school. And I walked into the first room and just went, I didn't know you could put this many people in one room. <laughs> How many people were at your school? 300. That was it. When I walked into my first lecture and there were 300 people in it, I just went, oh, this is more people than I've ever seen in one room ever in my life. Corinne, you and your friends wrote a story when you were around 10 years old called Gertrude the Witch. Yes. And you entered that into a writing competition. Where did you get the inspiration for it? Like I said, I was a naughty kid. So we, the three of us, there was a pine forest behind the town where we grew up. And we loved reading Enid Blyton books. I don't know whether kids still read Enid Blyton now, but there's lots of fairies and trolls and magical things and there's big pine forests. And we would go up into the pine forest and pretend we were in an Enid Blyton book. And lots of stories about witches and Spike Milligan and Roald Dahl and all of those stories. So we decided to write our own magical story about a witch. Um, except there was a lot of poo and wee and fart jokes and a lot of snot in it. And we entered it in a competition. And it was our story was kicked out of the competition because it was not suitable for children. Yeah, it was written by children. We were 10 when we wrote it, yes. Corinne, you are unknowingly honing your creative writing skills. I know a lot of people at my school who really enjoy creative writing and it's fascinating to see that you could put that into writing your own skits, comedy shows and even your book. Yeah, I mean the idea is really just have fun. That's where it started for me. I loved writing stories and I loved performing with my friends and I didn't expect anything out of it. I wasn't doing it because I wanted to be famous or on telly or anything like that. I just did it because I loved it and it was fun for us. And I always have enjoyed entertaining other people and seeing them um, happy out of what I'm doing. So just having fun and the ideas flow when you're having fun. It must have been very empowering to create your own gigs without waiting for permission as yes. well. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. That was one of the reasons I'd always wanted to be an actor when I was at university. So I started doing stand-up comedy as I thought it would be a really good acting exercise. You know, it's, it's just you up on the stage. Often what you're saying is very tightly scripted, but it has to sound like it's coming off the top of your head. So it's a really good way to get over stage fright as well, all of those things. And then I found I really enjoyed it because I had autonomy. I had control for myself over everything I was doing. And it is really empowering, especially when you're a girl in an industry that's full of boys as well, to not have to rely on anyone except yourself. It was great. In my research, Corinne, you're an outstanding student at school. When it came time to choose a job career, did you feel pressure? There was a big push, probably the start of the push to um, move girls into doing STEM subjects. So I felt a lot of pressure to do maths in year 11. That I'm just not gifted for maths, which is fine. Some people are, some people aren't. I just don't really get it. But it was a real push, you know, you're smart at everything else, you should do maths, you should do maths. So I started and I failed and I was really upset about that. And not, I wasn't upset that I failed because you always learn something from failing and also failing is not the end of the world. 
but I was annoyed that I let myself be pushed into something that I knew I didn't want to do. And that was one of the first ways that I learned that you need to really listen to yourself and know what you want and then stand up for it. So when I finished school, I had the marks to get into law. But coming from a small country town, I'd never met a lawyer before. And my idea of a lawyer was someone who was in a suit and wore high heels and, and had a, a briefcase case. and, you know, was very prim and proper. And that just wasn't me. And I didn't want to do it. And I didn't know what I wanted to do, um, but I knew I didn't want to do that. And a few of my really close girlfriends had decided to do nursing. And so I thought, I'll do that because then I can get to stay with them. I only have to go to the next town. I don't have to go all the way to Melbourne. I can just go to Albury Wodonga to study. That's only an hour and a half away from my small town. I'll go there and I'll become a nurse. Well, that didn't work either because nursing was a whole, it was a whole new way of teaching nursing. It was the first time it was being done at university and they didn't quite know what to teach us. So they taught us first year medicine and that has a lot of maths <laughs> and so I was stuck back at square one so I flogged myself all the way through it and I did okay and then I found out that everything that they had been teaching me I wasn't allowed to do as a nurse because only doctors were allowed to do it and that I thought mm, you know what if I'm going to be true to myself I can't live the rest of my life in a career where I know how to do something and I'm not allowed to do it so that was when I was doing that and I was still, I think, probably somewhere in the back of my head, I always knew that I wanted to be a performer, but I was too scared to say it out loud because again, small country town, there weren't role models around who did that kind of thing. So I didn't know who to talk to about it or where to go. Um, and so it was only when I'd moved away from home a little bit. What I did was when I was at university, I transferred from my nursing degree to an arts degree. So I transferred from Wodonga University, La Trobe, to Melbourne University, La Trobe, and changed degrees, was accepted, and then I told my parents what I'd done. Did that go down well? <laughs> it sort of went down well because somehow I convinced my father that I was going to get a degree where I would be an international financier at the end of it. I don't know what that is either. <laughs> and so I went off and I did my arts degree and I got more involved in that. And I sort of just fell into performing and my parents have accepted it, obviously, because I did okay at it and I made a good living out of it. But I think they're much more comfortable with me being a lawyer now because they know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not embarrassing them all the time either. What advice would you give to students when it comes time to choose a career from your own experience? Right, I have very firm views on this. Year 11 and year 12 are not the end of your life. You don't have to get everything perfect in year 11 and year 12. Do your best, have fun. If for whatever reason you don't get the marks that you needed to get to get into whatever your dream course was, doesn't matter, there are other ways of getting into it. I know so many people, including myself, who started off doing one thing and ended up doing something completely different. You remember I told you I didn't want to be a lawyer? What am I now? A lawyer. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> but it took me a long time in my life to figure out that that was what I was going to do. And also the marks that I got at school didn't matter because I got into law from doing a different degree and then I got in as a mature age student. You can get into university through doing a TAFE course. You can get into one course from doing another course and moving in. Or you know what? You might start uni, start doing what you think is your dream job and then think, I don't like this, which is what I did with nursing. Year 11 and year 12 are not the beginning nor the end of your life. They're part of your journey and you are still, I know you don't believe it when you're that age, but you are still very young and there are so many more adventures to have. And if you get to year 11 or year 12 and you still don't know what you want to do, it doesn't matter. At what point did you realise your passion? I always knew what I enjoyed doing was creating. So doing some kind of theatre or doing performance, or just writing, I love writing, um, anything where I could create something. So that was always my passion. I don't think I really nutted out exactly what it was 
until I decided I didn't want to do comedy anymore. So comedy was something that I was doing because I was good at it and people just kept giving me work, but it wasn't anything I ever really deliberately planned to do. The plan was to be an actor, I wound up being a comedian, pretty good deal, made a really good living out of it, had a wonderful, exciting life, and then it got a bit boring and I didn't want to do it anymore and I wanted to change and do something else and I was left going, but do what? So I had to go back to what was my passion and I realised my passion was I love working with a group of people, don't like working on my own. A lot of comedy is working on your own unless you're working on a television show. Didn't want to work on my own, wanted to work with a group of people, wanted to do something that really made me have to use a lot of my brain. I like thinking, I like problem solving and I like projects that start and finish. So law is good for those kinds of things. Uses your brain a lot, you work in a team of other people, a case starts and then it finishes. You start your case, you do it, it goes to court, you get a judgment and it ends. So that I think was the lesson that if me now could go back in time and have a conversation with my 11 year old self or my 15 year old self, it would be figure out what you really enjoy and the job will come around that. Corinne, when did you become bored with comedy? I'd done everything that I wanted to do. I'd done television, I'd done film, I had travelled around the world, I'd done live stand-up, I'd done radio, I'd kind of done all of the bits and pieces and whatever I was doing was kind of starting to feel a little bit the same. And also, this is something I'd been doing for 20 years, so I also thought, maybe you just need a break from it. So I went over to France. I'd always wanted to travel to France and I'd earned enough money to be able to take four months off, so I went over to France for four months learnt French, lived in Lyon, met a lot of good people, loved it, came back, realised I hadn't thought about comedy or missed it the whole time I was gone. And that's when I realised, time to get out. What transferable skills have you been able to take over from comedy to law? How to think on your feet, um, how to not take things personally, yeah. because both law and comedy are built on words and words can be used to be kind or words can be used as weapons and to be really aggressive. Mm -hmm. And the one thing to remember in any kind of performing or in law as well as is that people People might not like what you say, might not find it funny, might disagree with you, might even be angry with you, but they're not it's not a reflection on who you are. They don't know you. So then they don't think you're a bad person. They might just think your act is terrible. <laughs> but it's not the same thing as thinking you're terrible. I saw a lot of comedians start and, and not go on because they couldn't separate who they were as a person from who they were as a performer. And I think that's true in this social media world we live in as now, live in now as well, is when people are online and saying things about you, they don't know who you are. They can't actually like you or dislike you because they've never met you. They don't know anything about you. So it's all just rubbish. They're really important to keep those things separate. And that is important in law and in comedy and being able to talk. Blah, 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 the blah, blah, blah. The gift of the gab. Gift of the gab, yes. Corinne, thank you very much for sharing your super inspiring story with us young creatives. And I think it, to anybody watching, it will inspire those creative ideas to become a lawyer, a writer, a comedian, and just anything that they want to do with the advice you've given. It's been my absolute pleasure to be here today as well. I've loved it. Thank you, Corinne, for sharing your inspirational journey with us thus far. I hope this episode sets your passions on fire. Love to see you in the next episode. Head to inspiredby.com.au. Thank you so much for listening.